Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today we are discussing two uh, quite extraordinary pilots' watches from IWC. It certainly has been a while since I featured this um, legendary brand. Uh, and as it is aviation themed, I thought I'd um, pop on my Zen 104 today. Uh, and I have it on a actual uh, genuine Phoenix mil spec British made. Uh, NATO strap just suits its um, monochromatic scheme absolutely perfectly in my opinion and yeah still loving it <laughs> still loving it oh and, and before I forget I must give a massive thank you to Derek at Moya Fine Jewelers in uh, Carmel Indiana uh, they have very graciously lent in these two luxury watches uh, as you guys know, they are one of my top seven uh, authorized dealers for IWC and, and a whole host of other brands, of Omega, Breitling, um, Hublot, you name it. And of course, they buy luxury watches as well. Anyway, we should do a little bit of background on IWC. IWC, of course, stands for the International Watch Company. Uh, they are a luxury Swiss manufacturer located in Schaffhausen, Switzerland. That is pretty much the furthest eastern part of the country, very, very Germanic influenced, obviously because it is on the banks of the Rhine within stone's throw of the uh, border with Germany. They are a subsidiary of uh, the Richemont Group. I would say their top three, uh, the Portuguese, which we have reviewed, unfortunately I had to take that video down due to uh, sound issues, but uh, I did feature also the engineer. I, I would say their pilot's watches is probably what they're most known for, but those are their top three three iconic watches. Brand was founded in 1868 by Florentine Arisotto Jones, uh, who is actually, interestingly enough, was an American engineer and watchmaker. It's a fascinating history. I, I do urge you to check it out. Both of these watches are, as you can see, heavily, heavily Flieger inspired. The Mark 18 was released in 2016. This is a slightly later, so the Heritage version, uh, released in 2017. And then we have the Miramar, uh, which of course is in honor of the Marine Air Force Base in San Diego, California, still in service to this day. In fact, uh, during the heyday of the Top Gun era, the station was nicknamed Fighter Town USA, known for its former location of the United States uh, Navy Fighter Weapons School uh, and its Top Gun training program, which was obviously inspiration for the movie of the same name. Now, I decided to review these two together because we have the famous A-type dial here in the Heritage, which is in a titanium case, and then the Type B dial um, in this ceramic case. The Heritage is directly inspired by the Bur Biobachten Erden or observation watch. Now these were absolutely massive, about 55 millimeters. Obviously this is a lot smaller. The only thing immediately noticeable setting it apart from its precursory ancestors is the um, newer Probus crown, which I think is a subtle touch, although far less ergonomic and usable than the onion crowns of the original. It's more of an entry level watch uh, in the new pilot watch collection, a very carefully nuanced development based uh, obviously on its predecessor, the Mark 17. And it's also substantially more affordable. So the story of these watches really starts back in the 1930s. As you guys know, IWC was one of the big five contracted uh, by the German Air Force to make aviators wristwatches. The others were Laco, Stover, Langenzon and Wempe. But they all pretty much, with the exception of Lange, still make pilot's watches to this day. In fact, if you want a bit more of a uh, in-depth history, have a look at my recent LACO review, uh, and they just released a very affordable version, uh, I think around three, four hundred dollars. Interestingly, out of those five brands from World War II, um, IWC was the one that was made in the least amount, and IWC is the only Luftwaffe 5 that has also made watches 
being Swiss, of course, a neutral country at the time, uh, for the RAF as well. The heritage, as we see here, is more influenced by the B. Uren, specifically the 52 TSC. Now, these were very, very carefully designed um, with a strict set of parameters. Back then, they used pocket watch movements. These were hand wound, put them in a steel case with these very high contrast, uh, instantly legible type A dials, as we see here. The Miramar is uh, of the later type B dial with the 55 minute markers instead of the hours and the hours centralized, but we'll get onto that in just a moment. So how does this differ from the uh, Mark 17? Well, we have a smaller case uh, there's more of a traditional dial layout. Um, the, the 17 had also aviation style date window and we have uh, the nine and six markers returning. So this is a lot more faithful to um, the original 1930s uh, layout. So let's go over the basic uh, dimensions first. The heritage is 40 millimeters in diameter, 10.8 in uh, height, Lug to lug, we're looking at 50 with a lug width of 20 millimeters. The Miramar, on the other hand, is a smidgen larger. The diameter is 41 millimeters. The height is about the same, about 10.8 millimeters. And lug to lug, also 50 millimeters. And the lug width is 20 millimeters. Very contemporary sizes, but not oversized, which I think is, you know, absolute crowd pleasers, uh, certainly. And we'll discuss the, the how they wear in just a moment. What is interesting, however, is the choice of materials. For the heritage, they've gone for this wonderfully matte finish, uh, entirely made out of titanium. It's not quite a satinato, it's, I mean, it's really matte. It's not even sandblasted. It's um, as matte as you can get. It comes on a strap with the little uh, sheer style, sudden taper there, and then, um, you know, cut off at the ends, very typical of, of aviation. Actually reminds me of my Rios, my German made Rios straps. Very substantial and thick with a nice contrast cream stitching that kind of echoes the faux patinaed uh, markers there. We have a uh, titanium uh, buckle there, which is signed IWC, again in uh, matching this kind of cut off style of the other end there. The Miramar, with the exception of the titanium crown, is a ceramic case, extremely glossy finish um, that gives it a very modern look in contrast to its deeply ins vintage inspired dial. The buckle is titanium. Both crowns are exactly the same, uh, signed with that wonderful little IWC logo. And on the back, we have the Top Gun logo engraved there. The screw down case back is uh, titanium. Both cases feature a soft iron in a case for protection against magnetic fields and all the gaskets, crown, the case back and around the glass uh, feature a special secured displacement um, designed for a sudden drop in air pressure. Uh, this is in case your cabin or cockpit suddenly and unfortunately suffers a decompression. It won't blow out the glass or compromise the watches case. Both watches also have a curved sapphire glass uh, with beautiful convex uh, shape to it with anti-reflective coating on both the inside and the outside. The bezels are slightly, ever so slightly smaller. You can see that the, the lip on the heritage is a little bit bigger than the, um, the lip here uh, on the ceramic case but the style and shape is almost identical. Apart from that millimeter in um, size difference, uh, the case is almost the same. Crowns are very contemporary and they are in fact screw down the water resistance. It's six bar or 60 meters. The Miramar comes on a green uh, fabric strap with a calfskin lining, beautifully made and stitched. It's so dark olive, you could almost call it a kind of cannonball gray. I think it suits the watch perfectly. It's extremely comfortable. It has a wonderful, almost kind of fluidity to it. And the, the, the actual stitching and thread of it 
It's very tight at the same time. Let's look at the dials because I think the dials are very, very interesting. The Heritage dial is matte black with an ever so slightly grainy finish. The faux patina, it, it, its color is, I would describe, somewhere between parchment and cream. There is a beautiful kind of almost three-dimensional aspect to the numerals. They really pop out. Luminescence is absolutely fantastic on this one. It is super luminova uh, with a faux patina imitating the patinaed radium. Those clear arabics are beautifully defined. Uh, the printing is absolutely exquisite, stunning, broad sword hands that are blued, thermally blued, and then a date at the three o'clock. The date wheel is also blackened with the numerals there on the date window in white. I would have preferred if they actually matched it with the um, loom there. We have, of course, that very emblematic um, triangle with the double dots at the 12. Legibility here is, is outstanding, instant orientation. I mean, it serves its original purpose. Uh, that was set in the 30s. And we just have Swiss made, automatic 18 in Roman numerals, Mark 18, and then the IWC Schafthausen. I really love the the bezel. It's it's kind of the way it's it sits a little bit inside it, it, uh, of the case. It's got really nice proportions to it. The Miramar, on the other hand, has gone for this fossil grey mat. The dial itself is anthracite. We don't have as much of a grainy texture to it. And the inner 12 hour scale is in red. Bit of a strange choice. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, of the uh, telemeter scales of, of, of the chronographs in the 1930s. Uh, whether that is what they were trying to kind of suggest with that, um, who knows? The hands are exactly the same uh, scale and size as the heritage there, but unfortunately they're not blue, they are blacked out. Probably one of the biggest downfalls is we only get loom on a little rectangle there, the three, six, nine, and then the triangle at the 12. So you still get orientation, but not nowhere near as legible in low light as um, its uh, brother over there. The date window is in the same position with a black date wheel again. Also, if we look, the markers for at the outside, we don't have that lovely line or, or, or semi-rail track kind of layout there. It's They're just placed there. So what is inside these two beauties? Well, the Miramark came out in 2016 when they were still putting the ETA 2892 uh, under the name of the Caliber 30110. Um, automatic, of course, with a f operating at a frequency of 28,800 vibrations an hour, 21 joules, and a healthy 42-hour power reserve. Now, it is decorated. They've got the Cote de Genève, Pelage, etc. However, the Heritage is slightly newer. It came out in 2017, and this is when IWC changed over to the Celita SW300. Again, automatic, operating at the same frequency, 25 joules with a 42 hour power reserve. Also decorated with Cote de Genève and Pelage. There's always been a lot of debate which is better. This SW300 basically is a clone. Apart from some minor changes, uh, different tooth profiles on some of the wheels, etc. Both are capable of performing the same. The movement has also been modified and refined. We have a bridle style mainspring which uh, prevents overwinding and you can actually feel it click over after you've uh, wound it enough. And while it's not COSC certified, it has been um, regulated extensively and you can really tell with the accuracy on both of them about plus one, plus two uh, seconds in 24 hours, which is remarkably precise. Now, if we unscrew the crown, if I pop it in the first position, we get manual wind. And if I pull it out to the second position, we get quick set. So they both have these characteristics. And of course, if I pull it out all the way to the third position, the second hand stops. So it, it does have hacking, which of course was a major specification for uh, the original pilot's watches. So big question is, how do these bad boys wear on the wrist? Let's find out. So we'll start with the Heritage. 
It's a fantastic fit. Uh, it's amazingly slender. I can't get over how slender these are. I've seen dress watches that are thicker than these. The weight of this titanium one is about 59 grams. Uh, obviously titanium being super, super light. It's unbelievably comfortable. My only problem is I have a six and a quarter inch wrist. 50 millimeters here is rather large. So there is a little bit of overhang. Uh, I can get away with it. Now, I'm not going to say that this is too big for me because as you guys know, uh, Flieger watches, they were always intended to be massive. The reason was because they wanted, well, back then, um, pilots still wore goggles um, and, and the cockpits were not pressurized. But for, for most people, it would be splendidly uh, comfortable. The strap gives it a very nice reassuring uh, uh, fit. You certainly feel the quality and it's very legible at almost any angle. Um, so again, it does its job remarkably well. The Miramar is, strangely enough, even more comfortable. I think mainly due to the strap. It, uh, it, it's just softer, obviously, than the leather. It weighs a little bit heavier at 66 grams, not quite as legible, but again, it's very, very slender and, and would work <laughs> remarkably well actually as a dress watch. I know that's a complete faux pas, but yeah, you, you don't really notice that you have it on. And um, out of the two, strangely enough, despite the one millimeter increase in size, it is more comfortable. I, I think mainly due to the, the strap, but you know, if you blindfolded me, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them. Uh, probably the only exception is the ceramic has a less cold feel to it uh, on on the skin, which is, you know, I've I've never experienced a ceramic watch before, so it's quite an interesting experience. Anyway, let's um, pop them off the wrist and discuss the positives and negatives. So I think this is quite an interesting pair to discuss because, to be honest, I hated one <laughs> and I absolutely loved the other. Well, I hate's too much of a strong word. Um, let, let's let's be a little bit more diplomatic. I profoundly disliked the Miramar while I absolutely adored the Heritage. So let's talk about the pros and, and they do share a lot of the pros. Well, first of all, the quality is exquisite. I mean, these impeccably made watches, edges are razor sharp, are wonderfully put together. The fit and finish is perfection and you'd expect it for this price range. Out of the Luftwaffe 5, IWC is, is king in terms of luxury quality. A Lange have moved on, uh, diversified into other things. So IWC, without a shadow of a doubt, make the highest quality uh, Flieger watches. The Heritage especially, it's an icon, it's a classic. It's one of the most revered, imitated, uh, respected flight watches out there. With this very traditional bewitching style, it's gonna be an absolute strap monster, undoubtedly. The, the sizes they've gone for are crowd pleasers. For the smaller wrist, you could still get away with it because these are supposed to be bigger. I love the blued hands on this. It's a big shame that uh, there wasn't blued hands on the, uh, the Miramar. It's a timeless aesthetic. They make actually remarkably great everyday watches. Their, their, their functionality, although most of us are not gonna go zooming about in um, uh, JU52 any, anytime soon, we do appreciate this functional utilitarian practicality. They're also very, very durable. And this is a big advantage you have over more affordable rivals from Stover and um, Laco and, and the rest of them. That anti-magnetic resistance, that special um, in a case, is very practical for every day, especially if you use computers a lot or work in a recording studio or something where there's a lot of electronics around. And even actually it's intended task, they both do it remarkably well. If you are a pilot, uh, especially great in the cockpit. One advantage of course of the ceramic case is that it is entirely scratch resistant. You're guaranteed some kind of uniformity in terms of that high polish. It's not going to scratch nowhere near as easily as stainless steel or indeed titanium. You do get a feeling of authenticity with these watches, especially the Heritage. What I also appreciate about the IWC um, is that they haven't gone overboard with being historically accurate, like all the uh, military markings on the Laco and uh, some of the Stovers. 
They've brought it just enough into the future at the same time keeping one foot firmly in its roots and, and, and it's a great balance, they've achieved it. So let's discuss the downfalls. Well, first of all, they both have either the ETA or the Solita, which I think is incredibly expensive. I mean, uh, the Heritage is around 4,000 and the Miramar is even more, around five and a half, which is a lot of money for a Solita. I, I, it really is. And, you know, it's funny. I mean, people get quite touchy, even with the Zin 104 here, which has a Solita SW200. That's justifiable in a, in a $1,200 watch. So if Zin can do it and, and add some of their own technology in the watch, why can't IWC? It's a big shame they didn't utilize their in-house caliber 52110. That would have been incredible, but I do understand it's it's quite a big movement. Not sure if it could fit inside the cases of these very slender pieces, which you know is a, definitely would be a shame to lose some of that. But I understand at the end of the day, it would have unequivocally doubled the final price tag. However, one possible advantage is that certainly the Salutas and ETAs are going to be much more affordable to serve and keep running. One of the attributes of these movements is the, the position of the date. It's a little bit too much on the inside, in my opinion. Not so much on the A-type dial, but on the B-type dial, I, I think it, yeah, it's it's cuts that in a circle. I would have loved to see the date actually at the six o'clock on either of them. I think that that is something that Hamilton did so right with their khaki pilot watches. I just love the balance and symmetry, especially the Interstellar. They really got the layout spot on for those. Despite its very tooltastic aesthetic, it, it, it's handsome. It's got a kind of graceful, unpretentious look about it. I just wish they dialed back, oh, pun. <laughs> terrible pun there, I wish they uh, uh, dialed back the, um, the aggressive uh, faux patina a little bit. If you look at what Longines did with their the super compressor diver, they, they really did patinaed loom perfectly. It wasn't so cream colored, it, it was more subtle, but having said that, it's, you know, I'm really nitpicking here, I, I think with the exception of the overpriced movement here, um, this is definitely the winner out of the two. The rest of the negatives are mainly on the Miramar. I don't really like the red color or print used on that inner scales. At a distance, it's not really legible. I mean, if you look at it there, it's not really legible. Uh, you have to have quite a lot of light on it for it to, to, to be distinguishable. I mean, you know what the numbers are, but even so, it should be more legible, it kind of defeats the purpose of it. I'm not so keen on the um, fossil gray dial. And lastly, I think the, the finish of the ceramic, I, I wish they made it matte. It's so glossy, it almost, I, I, you know, I, I really dread to say this, it kind of cheapens the watch, uh, makes it look, I don't know, a little bit like a toy, which is, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you know, for five and a half grand, uh, you expect something that would really exude a little bit more class than, than it, this one does. And the last negative is the loom on this. Why they didn't loom up all the numerals, I just don't know. We've seen watches well under $1,000, well, mentioning no names, but um, yeah, with far superior loom. Ultimately, this amalgamation of 30s, 40s vintage cues with modernist materials like ceramic, it just doesn't work. It, it doesn't blend together. Strangely, however, I must point out that uh, I, I feel the Miramar works much better aesthetically uh, with the added chronograph complication. While I would have loved to see 100 meters or even more, uh, let, let's, let's just mentioned that the Zin 104 has 200 meters of water resistance. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, I would have loved to see this even more uh, resistant. You can take this in the water, light swimming. It can deal with it, so you don't have to worry washing the dishes or whatever. But um, yeah, slightly, uh, yeah, come on. I mean, this is four grand. Let's, let's, let's step it up a bit. Would I buy one personally? Well, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather go with Laco. I think Laco have really done 
the whole vintage thing wonderfully. If you see their aging, their their kind of how they age some of their new releases and Stova as well. I mean, the, you know, German made in the Black Forest. I think it's a lot better value for money and you get customization for a quarter of the price. You can get it engraved if you want to have a display back or whatever strap. That bespoke quality and as well as their amazing website gives them an edge, I think, in terms of uh, value for money. And they do have the historicity and, and, and legitimacy that IWC have as well. Yeah, a bit of a mixed offering in, in, in general, but still absolutely pure class and the heritage. Uh, let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Again, massive shout out and thank you to Moyo Jewelers. I'll leave a link uh, if you're interested. They also have uh, used luxury watches as well. Uh, so if you wanna get an IWC, I wholeheartedly recommend them. Uh, shout out to my good friend Derek. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.